Gracias, Paula. Pascal, good morning, good afternoon for you. Thank you very much for uh, accepting this invitation and for participating in the, uh, in the frame of this professional encounter. As Paula just mentioned, since we met last February, last winter, we were very well impressed with the, uh, with the conversation that we had and with the model that you shared with us. Pascal Coles is the director of Flanders DC or Flanders District of Creativity. And uh, Pascal is going to present or to introduce us into the way they uh, not only think, but the way they also manage uh, a, uh, the, the, the creative district that is based in Flanders. Flanders, for those of you who do not know, is a region at the north of Belgium. Uh, right uh, next to the limit with the Netherlands. So this is going to be very interesting because as Jose Fran yesterday mentioned, uh, they propose an idea of relating with the, the software and the hardware in a rather, let's say, different way than uh, what other creative districts do. So Pascal, thank you very much. The screen is yours. Uh, I'm going to make you right now a presenter. So uh, you can share with us your presentation, your screen. Um, Pascal won't be able to turn on uh, his camera. That's going to be a small issue. But nonetheless, Pascal is present here with us. And uh, let me know, Pascal, if you can share your screen. Otherwise, I, otherwise I, can, I can manage the presentation for you. Very good. So uh, despite all the technical difficulties, uh, very glad to be here. You can't see me. Uh, just imagine a slightly overweight, balding guy of 47 uh, years old. That's me. Um, so I am the managing director of uh, Flanders DC, um, which stands for Flanders District of Creativity. And uh, I would like to dive into what we do very concretely. But before I do that, and I see that you have my presentation on the screen, which is good. Uh, Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, so before I do that, I would like to talk to you a little bit about what we are not. And and because I, it seems that our name confuses people. And, and Conrado already mentioned it a little bit. When we talk about Flanders, and you, then you go to the next slide, often people confuse uh, Flanders with, with this, right? And so. Uh, and I, I wish that I was joking, but I'm not, especially when I go to North America. I have to explain more often than I want to that Flanders is not net Flanders, but then next slide uh, is indeed uh, the northern region of Belgium, where we speak Dutch. And the north is uh, the Netherlands. In the south, you have France, six million people. and. Um, Important to know is that Belgium is um, a federal country where the real power is on the state level. And you see there the various um, domains where the state has the exclusive power. So there is no minister, Belgian minister of culture, there is no Belgian minister of economy. It is all on a Flemish level. And um, why that is important, I will explain later on. But so we are dealing with Flanders, the northern region of Belgium. And then next slide. Then you have the district of creativity part. If you go to the next slide, um, we are not a creative district as the pure definition. We are not a physical area, not a, not a physical place where there is a lot of activities um, surrounding arts or culture or creative industries. Um, we are not about placemaking. Flanders DC is an organization that really aims to stimulate and support creativity uh, in the whole region of Flanders, right? And next slide, please. And this was started all in 2004 when the then minister, Flemish Minister of Economy and Innovation said, okay, we need to rethink the whole paradigm of our economy. Um, up until then, and I must admit even now, the Flemish economy was aimed at innovation driven by technology, driven by research and development. And she said in 2004, together with some employer organizations and, and some business schools, we need to rethink that. Um, it is very important technology and R&D, 
but creativity should be at the heart of our economic model. We should incentivize um, uh, companies, uh, uh, governments, local governments, society to um, focus more on creativity. And if we go to the next slide, uh, she decided to, um, to uh, invite regions from across the world, from Singapore to, to Bangalore to, to Maryland, Catalonia, etc., 10 regions across the world to see, okay, how are you guys going about uh, stimulating creativity within your economy? And they liked it that much, those 10 regions, that they formed a network called the Districts of Creativity. And this network still exists today. Um, it's a small, quirky network, 11 regions, and we share information on how we deal with creativity and creative industries, and I'll come back to that later, um, in our own regions. And then the next slide, uh, uh, we have uh, Flanders DC was born because they wanted to have a secretariat for the network. And in Flanders, they wanted to have an organization that was translating all the lessons learned and all the best practices that we saw uh, in the rest of the world to Flanders. And then next slide. Uh, so maybe a little bit more on our organizational uh, model uh, first, before I dive into the organization. Next slide, please. Uh, we are um, what in the UK is called, with a little bit of sarcasm, a Kwango a quasi-autonomous non-governmental organization. That means that we're a non-profit organization. We are legally private, but we are quasi-autonomous because we were co-founded by the government. The government appoints directors on our board of directors and uh, the government gives us funding. So we're 21 people, 2.4 million euro per year is the grant that we get from the Flemish government. But we are, since we are a private uh, organization, we are able to also um, accumulate our own revenue. Sometimes we double the grant of the, um, of the government. Sometimes we only have a couple of hundreds of thousands of, of euros that we add to this grant. So it depends on the activities that we do. Now, what are those activities? And that's the next slide indeed. Um, uh, it, 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 depends a little bit on, on the phase that we were in. In the beginning, we were a different organization than we are now. Because in the beginning, when you're talking about, okay, how do you get, how do you stimulate creativity in your economy, in your, in your uh, society? Um, we were focusing very much on entrepreneurial Flanders. Right? So the first phase was making entrepreneurial Flanders more creative and creative was when we talk about creativity in that time, we talked about um, the ability, the competence, the processes, um, and the mindset to come up with new ideas, new combinations of ideas, or to find new opportunities. And so our first target group that we aimed at, and that's the next slide, were the businesses. And um, in first, we needed to, well, create awareness around the concept of creativity. Again, this is like 15 years ago, and 15 years ago, creativity wasn't really accepted yet, at least not in Belgium, as a concept that is important for doing business, right? So we went to all little towns in Belgium to, do, to be a creativity evangelist, basically. Uh, we went to all kinds of sessions of, of lions clubs and, and, and uh, sector federation sessions to talk about what it is to um, enhance the creativity within uh, the organization, to innovate outside the research and development lab, that every employee needed to be creative, that you need to rethink your processes, your business model, the way how you do marketing, how you organize yourself. And also this is innovation. Besides going to all those small towns, we uh, did the big events, uh, like you see here at the Creativity World Forum, where, of course, we invite the big names, the Richard Bransons, the Steve, uh, Steve Wozniak, uh, the co-founder of Apple, and all those, uh, all to inspire people to bring new insights from the world uh, to Flanders. 
But of course, creativity is a little bit like world peace. I mean, everybody agrees with it. Everybody is fine with it. Of course, everybody wants world peace. Of course, everybody wants creativity. But how do you get there? That's the difficult part. That's the next slide. We developed um, uh, quite a lot of on and offline tools for companies and people to work on creativity, creativity and uh, skills enhancing, uh, how to brainstorm, how to tackle your business model, uh, how to choose within your team who is going to work on what. Uh, uh, so we gave them the tools and the handles to work on enhancing their creativity. But what we saw very quickly that working towards the businesses and the entrepreneurs was not enough. And so we went to policy, and that's the next slide. Um, we and we saw that that creativity was still being seen as a yeah a fun thing. It was not a serious concept. And so we teamed up with the biggest management schools in Belgium, the Flaric Management School and the Antwerp Management School, and they became our research center. And so we did a lot of macroeconomic studies. What is the value of creativity for our economy? We had to show them the money. If everybody who deals with politicians know you have to show them the money. So that's what we did. Um, so the collaboration with those management schools gave the organization credibility and gave the concept of creativity as a necessary key focus for companies in the future also the credibility so that's what we did towards policy it was more about the studies the macroeconomic uh, research that we did there but it was not enough working towards businesses working toward policy is not enough but if you want to change the the paradigm of your society and economy you need to tackle the, the general public and that's the next slide and and so what we did is we set up um several television shows one of it was aired in prime time at, at the most popular network that we have in belgium or in flanders at least um and and it was um again this is 15 well 14 years ago it was a, a show like the voice but then for people with with an idea for ordinary people with an idea and we had some spin-offs out of that tv show we had a book we had a traveling uh, exhibition all to show people look Everybody can and should be creative. Everybody can have ideas that are worthwhile. Uh, next slide, uh, besides television shows and books and exhibitions, we, um, we took over a whole town. And there we could say, did create real creative districts. We took over a whole town and, and in 14, 15 locations, we showcased what creativity could all be, be about. And we showcased Flemish creativity, um, either artistic, either in the innovation uh, scene. Next slide, please. But when we uh, inspire people uh, to become more creative, to do something with their ideas, of course, again, like in with the businesses, it's good that you create awareness, but then what? Uh, how do you go about um, uh, realizing your ideas? And we set up a service called SOS Idea, which was a free service and anybody in Flanders, you should you, you did not have to be a professional anybody with an idea uh business idea societal idea whatever could uh, have a consultation with us uh, for to get advice on how to proceed with that idea and if we really saw potential we put in our network to of research companies or research institutions or or businesses uh to help those people out so that is one of the things we did many more, but one of the things that we did towards the general public. And then last but not least, we have the education as a target group. And that's the next slide. Um, if you want to work towards businesses and if you want to um, uh, help them in getting more creative, it's no use if the people coming in do not have the right skills and the right mindset. So we thought that we needed to work towards education as well. Um, and we worked from six year to, to 24 years, from primary school to university, we did a lot of stuff. Uh, we had contests on all levels, 
uh, ideation contest, business plan contest. And of course, we used a television show, which was really popular. It was one of the most popular shows on television at that time. We used that as a driver for those contests. So practically all Flemish schools wanted to participate because it was linked to that television program. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, we had um, also teaching materials for teachers, again, in primary, uh, in primary schools and in secondary schools to help them to uh, stimulate and support the creativity of their pupils and their students. Uh, so we, uh, they could use these teaching materials in the classrooms uh, to talk about creativity and to enhance the creativity skills of their, of their students. And then last but not least, the next slide towards education. One of the coolest things we, we, uh, we really did, we ever did was, it was a, a conference called Ekanda. We did a five years in a row. Ekanda translate roughly to yes, you can, or yes, I can. Um, and this was aimed at 12 year olds. So we had like 3,000 12 year olds in a big conference room that we pimped up completely with lasers and what have you and big screens. And we treated them as CEOs. They are the CEO of their own life. And they're at 12 years old, they're on a threshold. Uh, they need to choose what they want to do in secondary school. And, and the message was, okay, trust your own talent, trust your own passion, use your creativity. And we had big celebrities and astronauts and scientists talking about how they were as a child and the path that they chose. Um, so um, by this, we wanted to, to create enthusiasm uh, with the pupils to, to do something with the creative talents that they have. So, and this was the first phase of Flanders. You see, it was all about installing the idea of creativity, the importance of creativity in the minds of people and giving them the tool set to start working on that. Then the second phase, which is the next slide, um, the government said, yeah, you have been working on making entrepreneurial Flanders more creative, that's cool. Now also try to make creative Flanders more entrepreneurial. And this is about the creative industries. Up until then, we barely worked with the creative industry. Since 2009, they became also a target. And the very interesting stuff is happening in the middle. Huh? In the middle of that, what you see there is where entrepreneurial Flanders meets creative Flanders, because that's the space where co-creation is possible and where you can do some cross-fertilization. But let me first dive into what we did on making creative Flanders more entrepreneurial. Uh, next slide, please. So like I said, this is about the creative industries. Um, and in 2009, in Flanders, in Belgium, there wasn't a definition of what are creative industries, creative and cultural industries, I should say. And we did the benchmark study all over the world, and we came up with these 12 subsectors. Now, I'm sure that in Colombia or in France, you will have some other subsectors there. Every country chooses their own definition. But what they do have in common here, and with the, uh, the uh, sectors in your country, is that the core resource of these sectors is some kind of let's call it artistic creativity. It is the ability to use uh, visuals, uh, the spoken word, sounds, and could be either uh, very commercial, like in advertising, it could be very cultural, like in the visual arts, but the core resource, uh, resource is this artistic creativity. And the fact that the outcome of that creativity, the product or the performance or the service is not only functional. There is also a symbolic added value. And this definition of the creative industries became the definition in the whole of Flanders that is being used by government, by research institutes, by businesses to define what are the creative and cultural industries. So that's the first thing that we had to do because it didn't exist. Next slide, please. Second thing, I already told you that when you, when you work with politicians, you need to show them the money. Well, we showed them the money. There wasn't any uh, data on, on how many people are working in that sector, what's the, the value of that sector. And 
uh, I can only advise anyone working, if it's on a local, local level or on a country level, um, you need to have the data. Uh, because this is what uh, convinces policymakers to invest um, and even investors, uh, private investors to invest. This, the figures that you see here are, are uh, old figures. There are new ones now. Uh, so today, 185,000 people out of 6 million in Flanders work uh, in the creative and cultural sector. So that's over 6% of the total labor market in Flanders, which is quite quite big compared to other sectors. So this opened up the eyes of the policymakers that this is really a sector that, yeah, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile to invest in. Um, so that is, uh, well, was a very important thing that we did there is opening up the eyes of the policymakers. Uh, next slide. Third major thing that we did is try to create one sector, because like I said, we defined 12 subsectors as being part of the creative and cultural industries in Flanders. Um, but to be fair, a, message, a, a musician doesn't really see a connection with an architect, right? They, they feel that it's a bit a different ball game. But at the end of the day, it, it isn't really. Uh, because we we share the same challenges. And so what we did for the very first time is to create this one sector. We invited uh, all the sectors. We had like 26 sector organizations. There are way more, and I will come into that later on. Um, 26 sector organizations to come up with one common position paper for the creative industries in Flanders. What is the status today? And where do we want to go? And we identified 50, 5, 0, 50 recommendations for the government, but also for the sector themselves. Unfortunately, I must admit that 10 years later, not half of those recommendations are being realized <laughs> or, or have been realized. So we still have some work to do. Um, but this was uh, one of the main things that we did is creating this one vision for the whole sector in Flanders. And, and that was really necessary. Next slide. Uh, those 50 recommendations, we could categorize them in six challenges. Um, uh, this sector needs international export and exposure, especially in a small country or region like Flanders. We need to go immediately uh, abroad, so that's a challenge. Clustering and cooperation. Um, I mentioned 26 organizations. Well, there are 113 organizations at the moment claiming to represent or support creative and cultural industries in Flanders. To remind you, we only have 6 million people in Flanders, so it's quite a lot. It's really fragmented, so we need more clustering, we need more cooperation. Third big challenge, entrepreneurship. Not the entrepreneurship as such, because we have an abundance of entrepreneurship in the cultural and the creative sector, but the entrepreneurship skills lack. Uh, Fourth big challenge is the access to finance. Banks are not really willing at the moment to invest in creative projects because of the risks. Uh, so that's a challenge. Fifth one is the intellectual property rights. And this is more about getting a fair pay. What we see in Belgium, but also in the rest of the world is that creatives are getting lousy paid. Um, often clients think, well, you're doing your hobby. So why should I pay you at all? So this is a problem that we also need to tackle. And sixth is the infrastructure. Um, I will go into detail on what we do on those challenges when I talk about phase three. Uh, uh, but now I would like to first go to the cross-fertilization uh, task that we have, the co-creation part. And next slide, please. Uh, what we did is we set up a program where we gave um, grants to companies and research institutes that wanted to work together on a very concrete innovation project with artists or uh, members of the creative and cultural industries. <clears throat> and a project could get up to 50,000 uh, euros well, per project. And in total, we had around 35 projects uh, where we matched creatives with companies and or research institutes. And I will give two examples. Uh, the first one is a heliophone that you see here. And the heliophone is a 
uh, objet d'art, it's an artwork, um, uh, developed by an artist uh, that wanted to um, translate light immediately into sound. So how can we transfer or make light into sound immediately, right? So that was his challenge. He wanted to create the, the, an apparatus that was able to do that. We paired him with the acoustics lab of the Catholic University of Leuven. They never heard of such a research question. It was a, a big challenge for them. So they were challenged to the limits of their knowledge which was a win for them because they found it really interesting to work on this. And the artist got access to the machinery, to the lab, to the insight and knowledge of the scientists. So it was really a win-win and they ended up in a working piece of art. This works, it transfer, transfers immediately, automatically lights into sound. And now we have some industrial players who are interested in the whole process and methods behind it. So this is an example of such a product. Next slide is also an example um, where we paired the Department of Neurology of the hospital in Ghent, which is one of the bigger hospitals in our country, with a design agency. Um, because the neurologist had a problem. They were working on a wireless brainwave scanner. So to scan the activity in your brain. And they wanted to have a wireless scanner so that people could go home, do their business, and the neurologist could scan from a distance the brain waves, the activity in the brains of those people. The only problem was that the apparatus that they had, first of all, wasn't comfortable. Secondly, it was ugly as hell. You look like Frankenstein. So nobody wanted to wear it. And that is a problem. If people always take it off, then the results of the measurements aren't correct. So they needed, and especially this was a problem with children. So they needed to have a new concept so that, and, and the pilot was for children, so that children would keep it on their head. And so the design agency looked at what was necessary and said, okay, the problem is that it's uncomfortable, that's one, but it's ugly as hell. So children, they feel stigmatized uh, if they need to uh, wear this. So let's make it cool. Let's look at what uh, Beats by Dr. Dre is doing. Let's turn it into a cool headset. And, and that's what they're looking at now. Let's add a game to it that they can use on their smartphone. So the longer they keep it on their head, the more points they accumulate. So it's a game now. Huh? Now, those neurologists would never have come up with those ideas, let alone, of course, the design of, of, of the object, if they wouldn't have met the design agency. And those connections uh, is what we call cross-fertilization, is what we call co-creation. And that is what we try to do on a daily basis, is bring those two worlds together. If we then go to the next slide, that's the third phase uh, where we um, we uh, lost a little bit the making entrepreneurial farmers more creative. We thought we have been doing this for like 12 years now. Somebody else can take this over. Creativity is now accepted as, as a model, as a, as a very important uh, concept. Let's focus on this co-creation and on those creative industries. Because those creative industries, um, and that's the next slide, uh, really need help to get more return on creativity. And that's now our byline, is um, getting economic return on creativity. Because to be very clear, Flanders DC, we are, a, like I said, the Quango. Uh, we, are, we are a private company. We are not government, but we get, receive the funding uh, of the Ministry of Economy and Innovation. So we are really focused on the business side of things, right? Um, and that's what we do. That's what we try to do on this daily, on this, uh, daily basis. Um, next slide, please. And so what we do is, is aimed at those six challenges, trying to um, help out with those challenges. And the first challenge was international exposure. Now, I, I say international, but it's also in Belgium. But let me first focus on the international part. So, if a game developer 
or an architect or a fashion designer wants to go to Korea or Colombia or to Poland or Germany, and they don't know how to deal with this, what the first steps are, they can come to us and we give advice on this. If we do not know the answer, we have the network of organizations and people in Belgium and abroad to help those companies out. This advice is free. Um, for three sectors, and only three sectors because of, well, lack of money, basically, um, we do more. We go to fairs like Salone del Mobile in Milano, which is the biggest design fair in the world. We set up a booth together with the other states in Belgium. And jointly, we set up a booth called Belgium as Design. And young designers get the chance to be present for a very small fee. Otherwise, they were not, would not be able to pay for that. And we do the same for gaming development students and for fashion designers. We go to fashion leagues and, and we are present there with boots and, and stuff like that. It's fairly traditional, but it's, it's, it's really, really um, worthwhile for, for the companies. And last but not least, uh, what we do is, and this is uh, something that we at the moment only do for fashion, but we're trying to expand it to other sectors as well, is business development trips. Suppose that we identify Colombia as a very interesting market for our creative companies. Then we invite companies to come over with us and we go to Colombia. We talk to the right people to see, okay, what are the shops that you need to be in as a fashion designer? What are possible agents for your label? Um, what is the lifestyle press in Colombia? And, and we try to arrange meetings with that press. Uh, so those are really business development trips. Uh, we went to Korea, we went to Germany, to the States, uh, not to Colombia yet, but you never know. So that's what we do on the international exposure part. Next slide, please. Internally in Belgium, uh, we are the organizers of the main awards in the creative industries in Belgium, especially the design awards are the oldest and the biggest ones. They're like almost 20, well, they are 25 years old. Um, and we do this just to give the exposure. Uh, uh, awards are a means to get exposure inside your country, but also outside your country. We have an online and offline magazine, and people tend to try to be in that magazine because, again, it gives exposure. But more importantly, we have um, a campaign. Uh, what you see there on the picture is I Buy Belgian, uh, Eco Belge, J'achète Belge, Toi Beer. It's an online, well, call it website or database, and it's the biggest online digital database, which is publicly open for everyone, uh, of uh, creative brands, creative Belgian brands. So it, this is together with our French speaking colleagues from Bologna and Brussels that we do this. And we put also put on a whole campaign. So when it's Christmas, we say, look, maybe it's time to buy Belgian, Belgian creativity. So that's what we do on the exposure side. Then the structuring and cooperation side. Like I said, that's the next slide. Um, uh, like I said, we have 113 organizations claiming to represent the sector. It's way too much. Policy isn't talking to 100 and 113 uh, organizations. They want one organization, one association for the creative industries. And that's hard because creators do not want to be pushed inside boundaries. Um, but that's something that we try to create awareness about. So we go to the various sector organizations and we try them to organize themselves and associate themselves so that there, there is one association. We also set up a lot of cross-fertilization events where we put together, for example, television production agencies with game development studios or game development studios with marketing agencies so that we show them that in, even inside the creative sectors, there is a lot of potential for cross-fertilization, for cooperation. And then last but not least, I talked about uh, policy and showing them the money. Uh, we are the, the ones behind the creativesector.be website, and that is creativesector.be, where we show all the data of the sector. So open for everybody. Everybody can see in my town how many architects are there, how many fashion designers are there, what's, their, what's the total revenue, what's the total added value. Uh, and all of this to show to the rest of the world, 
as one big sector, this is economically very important, very important. Next slide, please. So we had the international exposure challenge. We had the challenge of structuring this sector. Um, but the biggest challenge that we saw is getting the right entrepreneurship skills in there. And where in the beginning of Flanders, you see, we needed to inspire people about the necessity of creativity. Now towards creative industries and cultural industries or sector, we need to inspire people about the necessity of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship skills. We do this again, like being entrepreneurship evangelists. We go to every small town in Flanders uh, to give presentations and sessions and workshops, but also we do the big inspirational events that are necessary, the big international speakers, of course. We build the on and offline tools. For example, uh, online tool is about pricing. How can you calculate your price? You're a new young designer, you make vases or you design logos. What is the price that you can ask for your creative work? We have a tool that calculates, that helps you to calculate your pricing. Uh, again, we give the free advice to anyone in the creative industries that has a question concerning their business. Could be their business model. How do I uh, sell online? Where do I find producers or factories for my product? Things that we can help them with. People where we see a lot of potential, where we see a lot of ambition, we put them in peer-to-peer -peer learning groups. Groups of 10, 12 companies where they learn from each other, learn from us, and we learn from them. Of course, we do the seminars and webinars like everybody who is listening here. Um, but we also do, and, and, and this is uh, a quite interesting thing, is meet the experts. Uh, what we see is that just having half an hour with, for example, the creative director of Balenciaga in a one-on-one -on -one meeting is worth so much, and so much more than a whole conference sometimes, that we set these kinds of um, sessions, uh, that we develop this kind of session. So uh, in the Meet the Expert days, uh, we um, give them access one-on-one -on -one for half an hour with very well-known and respectable experts, people you never are able to talk to um, and 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 this is rated very very highly i must admit so that surrounding the entrepreneurship skills uh, then going to the next uh, challenge that we have is access to finance like i said banks aren't really open at the moment to invest in the creative industries that's one thing also because I don't understand the creative industries. But the creative industries, uh, they don't know how to talk to people who are able to fund projects and, 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 and uh, enterprises and companies. So what we do is we, we put them together in a very safe environment, which is a thin mix panel. Thin mix, the, well, the name, the term says it itself. It's a mix of people, could be venture capital people, could be uh, uh, bankers, uh, people who are responsible for government subsidy schemes. We put them into a panel and uh, creative companies or creatives can apply to pitch in front of that panel, not to get funding, but just to be able to do the pitching for the first time and to get feedback from real investors on how they pitch and on their file. And of course, if a VC or an investment banker would be interested in the project, there are always, it's always possible that deals are made. But it's foremost an educational program, uh, the Finmix panel, rather than a real deal-making uh, program. We're also working on improving government schemes because um, many government subsidies especially in the Department of Economy and Innovation, they are really aimed at hard technology, at innovation. And a visual artist isn't always aimed at, um, at hard technological, uh, technological innovation that needs to create money. So we are now working with the government to see, okay, can you change the conditions to enter those subsidy schemes so that visual artists, for example, or uh, creative people can also apply for them. 
And last but not least, like I said, the finance world doesn't really understand the creative world. That's why we give seminars to bankers, accountants, and VCs on what is this all about? How does a fashion label work? What are the economics behind it? What are the finance needs? And also what are the opportunities in these sectors? And uh, we see that it is that this is important so that they try to uh, understand that sector. Then, uh, next slide. We're almost at the end. Um, we have the uh, IP, international, uh, intellectual property. We give advice there and people can get a discount if they do an ID pool request at the IP agency for the Benelux, but that's not the most important part. The most important part for us is the Creative Fair Play. CreativeFairPlay.be, this is also available in Spanish, by the way, and in English and in French, is a manifest. It's a campaign and a manifest. Like I said, we saw that um, uh, creatives were getting lousy deals. Um, local governments that did a contest for architects or for visual artists to create a, a piece of art, a public piece of art, they always um, asked creative work for free uh, in those contests. Companies pay peanuts for create, to creators for logos, for creative work. And so we wanted to do something about it. And we created a manifesto, Creative Fair Play, with seven commandments. If you're working with the creative sector, please take in mind, take into account these seven commandments. And the first thing is, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Huh? Don't ask people to work for free. But on the other hand, creators also don't work for free because we often see that young creators are willing to work for very low wages. Uh, and this is bad for competition and for the more mature creators, of course. So this manifest to create a fair play is trying to change that. And what we see now is that creators are using this manifesto when they're dealing with companies, with clients, and they're in the contract phase. They say, look, I want to sign the contract, but I want to, I want you to uh, subscribe to the Creative Fair Play manifesto, that we would keep these seven commands. That's what we do uh, towards the fair pay, towards the intellectual property uh, challenge. And then last, um, next slide, that's the, infrastructure part and like i said in the very beginning fantasy C is not about hardware we did start like 10 now 12 years ago the very first co-working network with 10 no eight locations in belgium that was the first co-working locations that there were in belgium and it was called bard office but actually we we transferred it to somebody else now we are not in it anymore um because for us infrastructure isn't the main point what we do is is uh, or what we do do <laughs> is uh lobby towards cities and flemish government when we see that there is an issue with housing for example uh the activities of our uh, creative entrepreneurs are often activities that are done in the city center often and of course city centers are very expensive and when we see that there is when there is a problem we lobby towards the municipality or the city council to tackle that problem but that's that's all what we do because and that's the next slide like i said for us it's not about the hardware uh, to be frank we see um too many uh local policy makers focusing on the infrastructure they have a building or they have a, a street or a, or, or a district which is derelict, which, which is in need of renovation. And they think that creators are addicted to wet cement. They think if we renovate the building, then creators will fly in and they will save the neighborhood. And often, or sometimes that is the case, and sometimes creators do need infrastructure but actually they need to focus more on other things or policy should focus on other things and that is focus on the software it's focus on bringing people together focus on 
helping people out with advice, with your network, putting them into contact with the right people so that they can do their business. Rather than putting all your money in the bricks, put your money in the software and the software are the people. And that's what Flanders DC is all about. And the next slide is the end. So I hope it was, uh, uh, I met your expectations. If not, I'm sure I will hear it in the meeting afterwards. Well, Pascal, you always meet our expectations. I have to say that, uh, you know, at Conexiones Creativas, we strongly resonate with the discourse and with the strategies that you manage uh, at the very core of the uh, Flanders uh, District of Creativity. Thank you very much for sharing all your experience and uh, all your insights. I would like just to highlight a few things out of my more than two pages of notes that I took while you were presenting. Uh, the first thing is not about the hardware. We need to know and understand that it's probably much more important to invest on people. That is something that we really share with you. And also a definition of the cross-pollination or cross-fertilization uh, notion that you mentioned before, and is the fact or the possibility of being challenged to the limits of our knowledge doesn't matter that we work in the creativity field, we always need to be challenged to the limits of our knowledge. As you put it at the beginning of, the, of your presentation, we need to rethink things. So Pascal, it, it, it was a pleasure. Uh, absolutely, you fulfill our expectations and uh, we really appreciate your involvement and your participation. Thank you, Pascal. It was a pleasure here to you again after our meeting in Antwerp. Nos gustan las distancias cortas. Te estamos esperando en www.cccreativas.com